Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ian Riccoboni, and I'm about to open some wrestling stuff. So this one is near and dear to me. Um, the company Mattel put out what they called a retro line of wrestlers. Now, Mattel took over the WWE license uh, in January of 2010. And at that time, they put out a series of basics and then a series of elite figures that had some more articulation. Uh, those were always really cool to me. Uh, just seeing wrestling figures brings me back to my childhood. Uh, I remember going to Woolworths. I remember going to uh, the Five and Dime in, in Cape May, New Jersey. I remember going to Kmart, Jamesway, Bradley's, Caldor, you name it. I went there looking for wrestling figures. And they didn't look like the basics or elite figures uh, that Mattel would release. Or even the, the ruthless aggression or bone crunching uh, action figures that... Jacks released previous to them when they had the license from 96 to 2009. Uh, they looked a lot more like these. And these are the WWE retro figures. Now, uh, today we're going to be taking a look at Series 5. And Series 5 was pretty cool because you had the New Day, who are super popular. Uh, and then you had one of the all time greats, one of my all time favorites, the Macho Man Randy Savage, uh, in his first of two releases in the retro set. And then, uh, along with this series in particular, I chose this series because it also has uh, the unique distinction of uh, being released side by side with the official retro ring. Now, we're going to start with this first. The series that the retro set is based off of uh, began in 1990. I remember seeing them shortly after WrestleMania. Uh, Maybe in May or June of 1990, I saw them in Toys R Us first, uh, followed shortly by Kmart, Woolworths, uh, and James Way. And I remember really being on the hunt and, and being scattered looking for Series 1, which included Jake the Snake, Demolition, Hulk Hogan, Rick Rude, Akeem, Big Boss Man, and I'm probably forgetting somebody like the Ultimate Warrior, somebody real big. But uh, that was, a, I believe, a 12-figure set. It came out in 1990. And it was really, really exciting because this was the first time I can remember walking into a toy store and seeing professional wrestling figures. The line ran through 1994. It ended with the, the now kind of infamous green card set. Toward the end of the line, uh, they began to color code the cards, beginning with the yellow card set, which had Kamala, Razor Ramon, Nails, Shawn Michaels, Crush. Uh, and that set was really cool because when you saw it on the shore shelves, it, it popped out immediately. Also Shawn Michaels in that set. Uh, and then the red card set, which had guys like Bam Bam Bigelow, a uh, cool re-release of Bret Hart, Lex Luger's debut figure with WWF, and, and then so on and so forth. We had purple cards, we had dark blue cards, and then finally, ending with the green cards with 123 Kid, the Smoking Guns, and a repaint of Crush, Ludwig Borg, and a repaint of Yokozuna. Now, it blew my mind as a kid because the first time I ever saw those, and, and the first time I realized there was any collectability or any resale market, was actually shortly after the demise of the line. It... I did not know the green cards existed. There was a very famous ad that came in the WWF magazine that said, Undertake Them All, which listed the series that were about to come out, ending with the yellow card. So, and it was always fun to see the series after that because you didn't really have insight at that time. There wasn't a real strong or easy to navigate internet, and there wasn't really uh, accessible collector magazines, at least for a kid who, at that time, I was six, seven years old. So I was out there looking for these figures, and it was always just this thrill and this rush when you'd find them at Lane Co. in Allentown, Pennsylvania, or uh, we didn't have Walmart yet. So again, Bradley's, James Lake Clover was another spot. That's where I got the set with the Warlord and the British Bulldog and all those guys. Uh, so it was always really cool. And uh, that set felt like it was out forever, uh, the, the run of it, but it ended in 1994. I didn't know the green cards existed until 95, and I remember begging and pleading my mom to get me the 123 Kid, which I think was $30, uh, at a baseball card show. And, uh, you know, sure enough, he was under the tree for Christmas. So it, it was it was pretty wild. Um, and I ended up getting that set over time, the last one being Bart Gunn. I got him in 1998, one of my very first eBay purchases. But uh, the fun thing with that was right away with the first set, Series 1, they, there was 12 wrestlers, uh, I believe, it came out with a ring. And it looked a lot like this. In fact, almost identical to this. Uh, this ring was really cool as a kid because it came with a flag. It came with a championship belt. Um, in this one, it looks like it just comes with some stairs. 
There is a title on the back. It is a little misleading though. Title not included uh, in here. Uh, but it's pretty cool, and it, it shows you um, all the wrestlers, which I always thought was the coolest part. And then it shows the upcoming series, which includes uh, Series 6 with Bray Wyatt, Daniel Bryan, Nakamura, and Sting. And then Series 7 with Shawn Michaels, Sheamus, Chris Jericho, and Kurt Angle. Uh, this ring was really cool. If you're lucky, you could find it at Kmart uh, over this past winter for prices as low as $3 on Amazon. It got really low as well. Thanks to the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast for pointing that out. Got down to about $7 with free shipping at one point, and they were stocking up, and I know a lot of people were. Um, I got this on a trip with my wife a few days uh, before our daughter was born because we were just trying to run out the clock. We were hoping walking around doing anything might induce her labor. So we journeyed to Kmart about 30 minutes away, and we found this. Uh, I believe it was less than $10. Now, a little bit more expensive, but this was part of Series 5. And on the box, you can see the wrestlers in Series 5. You see Big E, you see Macho Man. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And then you see some of the Series 4 wrestlers like Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, uh, Series 3, AJ Styles, Series 4, Ric Flair. So these are always cool. Uh, this is a throwback to that first set in 1990. Now, the Series 5 itself was pretty cool. And we'll start with the Macho Man. Now, the Macho Man has two figures in the retro set. This is his first of two. Uh, this is the arms down variation. This is a uh, easier to find of the two. There's an arms up. The whole bubble is different when his arms are up. Uh, Macho Man's rookie figure came in the LJN set. He was in his famous WrestleMania 3 pink attire with white stars and yellow boots. Uh, Zack Ryder showed up a cool prototype on the Major Wrestling Figure podcast broadcast on Christmas Day, which is really cool. I've never seen that before, where it had stars on the boots. Uh, from there, Macho Man's been one of the most toyetic figures out there. Uh, Macho Man has had numerous releases, and in the Hasbro style set, in the Hasbro set, uh, he was in Series 1. He'd also be released in Series 2 as the Macho King. He'd be re-released in Series 3 uh, as the Macho Man, which was the Macho King figure without the crown, without the scepter, and on the back of his pants it said Macho Man, which I didn't know existed until about the year 2002. And then uh, also he came out in his full coat and cowboy hat attire in the set with Skinner, IRS, Macho Man, uh, and Hulk Hogan. So he's been uh, firmly represented in these types of sets, but it was cool because... Um, this was a nice figure that would fit nicely right on the the bookend of the set uh, with, you know, where the line may have led off. So I'm going to open this guy up, and for Macho Man, we're just going to describe some of the things that comes with it, because these retros are pretty cool. Um, I believe starting in Series 3, uh, they started to come with, with stands that allowed you to um, stand them up, but also uh, on the bottom of the stands, it comes with a little code that lets you add it to the game WWE Mayhem, which is a uh, computerized card game. Um, it's pretty cool. It's it's like a uh, RPG type fighting game. Uh, you got to power up your guys to get XP and so on. So um, this is the Macho Man. It's pretty cool. Um, I pegged this attire late 97, early 98. He's got the Macho Madness uh, gear on him. Let me take a better look at him right there. Got the Madness on the front. On the back, you got the Star Decal. Pretty cool. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, this shirt was exactly like this. I don't believe there's any uh, design on the back. Got the NWO logos, cool stars on the back. Uh, really nice figure for a long time. Um, this figure was going for about $40 to $50. Uh, then it started showing up at Five Below, which is a great spot to look if you're looking to get into these, depending on when you're watching this video. Uh, you could find these retros for about $4.99 there on occasion. Macho Man was in a wave uh, that hit Five Below pretty hard in the winter of 2018, and as was the rest of the set. But uh, now you can find him reliably for about $20. Uh, I got him at Ringside Collectibles. Um, during the Cyber Monday 3.0 sale, uh, I think for about six bucks or five bucks, so he's pretty cool. Um, the Macho Man, he's got the the Gorilla Press action, um, which was first pioneered by the Hulk Hogan Series One action figure that had the hands open. Um, but in this set, you'll see a lot of the Gorilla Press action with the hands kind of cupped like this, including Series One Ultimate Warrior, which is pretty cool. So. There's your first one, the Macho Man Randy Savage. Our next one, 
And this set's interesting because it features two men that have walked out of WrestleMania, the world champion in the WWE. This next one is Kofi Kingston. Now, Kofi's awesome. Uh, product of Chaotic Wrestling. Trained, I believe, by Brian Fury, the uh, Killer Kowalski school up there. And uh, Kofi, his debut figure was in the Ruthless Aggression Series 34 set, and that was by Jax. Uh, he would then be a part of Series 1 of the basic line for Mattel, and uh, he was a no-brainer to be a selection for this Mattel retro set. Uh, he has the jumping action, which I first remember from the Series 1 Ultimate Warrior uh, back in the Hasbro set, which was pretty cool. That, of course, was one of the first figures that I got, and... Uh, that action would be used repeatedly throughout the set with Jimmy Snuka, with the Rockers, um, who ended up being released several times. The first release and the second release with the Super, the SummerSlam sweepstakes uh, attachment. And then the third time as a re-release, packed in with the Nasty Boys and the Legion of Doom. Bet you didn't know that. Uh, so Cody Kingston, he also comes with a stand. And now the stands are nice because you can, you know, they... These guys stand pretty nicely as is on shelves, um, but Kofi, you're part of the New Day, uh, you know, great group, very positive, love what they do, really funny, and uh, this is a really cool action figure. Um, we'll take a look at some of the designs here. They have the New Day decals and logos right there on the back. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Yep. And on the side of the trunks, uh, the purple and blue Pretty cool. So there's Kofi Kingston, Wrestle, two WrestleMania main eventers in this set. Um, and this set came out, I believe, in 2018. I know that's at least when I started seeing it on the store shelves. The set as a whole, the Mattel Retro, started to emerge midway through 2016. They were announced at the 2016 San Diego Comic Con. Um, and there's been very few substitutions. When they announce that people are coming out, uh, they come out with two exceptions. Enzo Amore in Series 4 and uh, Antonio Cesaro, I believe, in Series 7. Which is 8. I'll have to correct that. But uh, those are the two, the only two that have been announced and subsequently released. Now, Xavier Woods, he is uh, my good friend Jay Lethal's former tag team partner, known as Consequences Creed at one point. Um, I looked it up. I thought he may have had an action figure in Impact. Uh, to my knowledge, he did not. But he did make his figure debut in a two-pack with R-Truth in the basic line uh, in the Battle Pack series. And this one is really cool because not only did they get the deco on the kick pads here, but they also got the point of the boot, as Xavier Woods has. So this one's really cool. Again, it comes with the stand, uh, the New Day logo. This one is yellow. Uh, Kofi's was blue, so interesting to note. Do you ever get your figures mixed up? There you go. And then finally, last man in the set here, Series 5, Big E. Big E came in to the WWE as Big E Langston. That's how his first action figure uh, is displayed, uh, the first time in the line, which I believe was basic 34. Double check on that. And we'll open Big E up here. Now Big E, we talked about sort of the Macho Man Gorilla Press action. Big E has a slightly different action. He also has the Gorilla Press, but his hands just have a different grip. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the deco is great. And you see the New Day logo, and he's got a pink stand with him. So, all in all, this set, uh, Series 5, I believe, came out in early 2018. Um, this is a winner. Uh, I mean, look at, the, look at the sculpt on that. So, the, the only real difference, you know, from being a kid and, uh, and these, these really take me back. Um, they have better head sculpts, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, each of the expressions of the New Day is amazing. I mean, there's Kofi and Xavier Woods. We really didn't talk about that. Uh, but those are the big differences with these, and that's kind of neat. I mean, to a degree, I I was kind of hoping these would kind of be uh, not perfect. You know, I was kind of hoping that these would be, 
you know, a little rough around the edges. You know, for every Hasbro there was, uh, there'd be some with with uh, details not painted or, uh, you know, somebody would have, have boots they weren't supposed to have or the famous example, uh, you know, the smoking guns boots in the, in the final line. They just wanted to get them out the door. And the same thing happened with LJN, uh, you know, where, where the warlord who'd wear long tights uh, his whole time in WWF to that point um, ended up in some short tights. And, and uh, you know, there's been some wrist tape that hasn't been painted and so on. So... I was kind of hoping for some of those for the authenticity of the line and the sake of the line. And you get them here. It's pretty cool. So overall, I highly recommend getting these. Uh, chances are you're not going to find them at, at, uh, at Big Lots or Five Below anymore. Uh, you had a shot uh, late last year. Um, but Ringside Collectibles just got a whole bunch of these in. You might be able to score them pretty cheap, um, even without the sale. Uh, I know for a long time they've been under $10 now, which is a significant drop. Um, if you haven't got these yet, you might want to get them now, because I don't think they'll get any cheaper. So, thanks for joining me here on Ian Riccoboni Opens Wrestling Stuff. we got more retros to come. The ROH figure review. There's 16, 17, including Michael Elgin that comes with the ring. And there's more to come, so we're going to get caught up on those. We've got some more micro brawlers, some more pro wrestling crates. So please rate, review, subscribe, give the old thumbs up. And uh, we'll see you next time. Happy wrestling, everybody.